Okay, we're on 8.7. Solve one step inequalities on page 635. Your pages should look like these. The first thing we're going to look at is the real world link. It says that the graph shows the number of home runs at the top of, that the top hitters on the baseball team hit last season. And so if you look at our graph here, because it's important to read our graph, um, over here it says we've got the numbers, and over here it's the player. And for Josh, it looks like he hit somewhere around 12 or 13 home runs. And then Mark hit somewhere around 23 home runs. Nate hit around 15 home runs, and James hit around 19 home runs, it looks like. So it says right in inequality that it compares the number of home runs Nate hit to the number of home runs that Josh hit. So here's our Nate, and here's our Josh. So they give us a greater than sign. Remember that the alligator wants to eat the bigger number, and so which one is the bigger number, Josh or Nate? So I would say that Nate is our bigger number, and Josh is our smaller number, okay? And it looks like Nate is 15. Let's see, let's change colors here. All right, so it looks like Nate is at 15 home runs, which is greater than Josh, who looks like he has, um, I'm gonna say 12 home runs. Maybe you think that's 13, that's fine too. Number two says write an inequality that compares the number of home runs James hit to the number of home runs Mark hit. So now let's get rid of all this drawing that I did and let's look at another one. So we're going to be comparing James and Mark. And so we're looking for less than. This is our less than sign. And so the alligator wants to eat the bigger number. So which one is bigger, Mark or James? All right, I see that Mark is the bigger number because it goes all the way up here, which looks like 23. And James is a smaller one, so that's the one on the other side of the alligator. And it looks like he has 19. So if I wanted to write the numbers down, I could say that 19 is less than 23. Number three says, suppose James and Mark each hit three more home runs. Write a new inequality that compares the number of home runs James and Mark hit. We're going to compare the number of home runs that James and Mark hit. All right, so we're going to say Mark hit three more, so now Mark's at 26, and James hit three more, so he's at 22. So when we're showing the new inequality, let's write down that now James is at 22 and Mark is at 26. But the statement is still true. Since they both hit three more home runs, they're still proportionally the same that James is smaller than Mark. Or the number of home runs he hit is smaller than Mark. Alright, use addition and subtraction properties to solve inequalities. When you add or subtract the same number from each side of an inequality, the inequality remains true. This is just like our one-step equations that we did before. The only difference now is that we're calling it inequalities because we have inequality signs, not equal signs. So it's not equations anymore now, it's inequalities. But the steps are still the same. We're going to do the opposite. Um, remember that as long as we do something to one side and we do it to the other, we're going to remain equal, or it's, the statement's going to remain true. So looking at this, when we added three to each of them, adding three to James, adding three to Mark, it didn't change that James hit less home runs than Mark. And that's what's important that you see. So if I'm solving an inequality, it is okay to add the same to both sides, and it's okay to subtract both sides. So we're still doing like our T charts here. And what we do to one side, we do the other. So if we're adding four to each side, the statement is still true here that it's gonna be nine less than 13. If we subtract three from both sides on this other one, the statement's still gonna remain true. It's gonna be eight is greater than three. So number one says solve x plus seven is greater than or equal to 10. Graph the solution on a number line. So we're gonna do our T chart. We've got x plus seven. So to do the opposite, we're gonna subtract. So we subtract both sides by seven to get rid of the seven here and we get x by itself. So we figure out that x is greater than or equal to three. 
Now if it's greater than or equal to, you need to remember that that's our closed circle. And if we're talking about greater than, this is the direction our arrow is going to go. We're going to pick out any number. You can check your answer with any number here. So I'm going to just pull a number from my number line. It can be any number. I'm going to pull 9. And I'm going to say, okay, 9 plus 7 is greater than or equal to 10. So when you do 9 plus 7, that's 16. Is 16 greater than or equal to 10? Check. It sure is. So do you see what I did? I just grabbed any number on my number line that I shaded in, and I could use it for my equation to check my inequality. Number two says solve x minus 3 is less than 9. So now look what we're doing. We're bringing down our inequality sign. We don't have an equal sign anymore. We're bringing down the inequality sign. We're doing the opposite. Instead of minus 3, we're adding 3. What we do to one side, we do to the other. And so we're adding 3 to both sides and we get x is less than 12. Less than, x is less than 12. Hopefully you remember that means an open circle. And here's our less than sign in our shaded area. If you want to check your work and make sure that you came up with the right numbers, you can take any number you want, let's say 9, and plug it into the, x, the um, inequality of x minus 3 is less than 9. So I grab 9, I'm going to say 9 minus 3, is less than 9. 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 is less than 9 and there's your check because 6 is in fact less than 9. So my, my graphing is correct and my, my uh, inequality looks like it went right. So I want you to do A and B on your own and when you come back I'll have the answers. Alright, here are my answers for A and B. Notice that for A I used a closed circle and I checked my work by picking out a section from my arrow area, my shaded area. And then for B, I have an open circle because it's not equal to. And then I have an arrow going off to the right because it's a greater than. And here's like, you know, I told you that it'll show you the greater than, right? If the variable's on the left, it'll show you, the symbol will show you which way the arrow goes. So this one was a less than, this one was a greater than, so you see the arrow. All right, using multiplication and division properties to solve inequalities is the same situation. Um, again, you're just multiplying or dividing both sides by the same number to keep them, you know, equal, that the inequality will remain true. So when you solve 5x is less than or equal to 45, you can divide both sides by 5. And I like to do our little t-chart here. And then um, when you divide both sides by 5, you get x is less than or equal to 9. Close circle because it's got the equal to and then the arrow is going to the left. And you can check your work by grabbing one of these numbers, plugging it in, 5x is less than or equal to 45. If I use 7, 5 times 7 is 35. And do you agree that 35 is less than or equal to 45? Hopefully you do. And that's a check mark. Example number four is x divided by eight is greater than three. And so we're going to multiply both sides by eight. So when you multiply both sides by eight, you get rid of the eight over here and you get three times eight is 24. So x is greater than 24. Because it's greater than and not equal to, it's going to be an open circle because it doesn't include 24. And then we've got the greater than, so we're going to the right here. And then if you grabbed any of these numbers over here, um, because it's divided by 8, you want to make it a multiple of 8. So let's pick something like 32. And let's do 32 divided by 8. Is that greater than 3? And that would be 4, which is greater than 3. So that's our check. All right, you're doing C and D on your own. And when you come back, I'll show you the answers. Pause now. Okay, and here are the answers. For C, you have an open circle over the 8 and arrow to the left. And then um, for D, you have a closed circle over 42 and an arrow to the right. Um, I, when I'm checking my work, I chose 6 because it's in my shaded area for C, and then I chose 48 for my shaded area in D just so I wouldn't end up with a mixed number. I wanted something that was a, um, a multiple of 6 that I could easily do the math um, to check my work. 
All right, you can check your solutions by substituting numbers into the inequality and testing to verify that it holds true, which I've showed you with each of those examples. So number five says Laverne is making bags of party favors for each of seven friends attending her birthday party. She does not want to spend more than $42 on the party favors. Write and solve an inequality to find the maximum cost for each party favor bag. So we know that there's going to be seven times X dollars. And she said that she doesn't want to spend any more than, um, no more than, okay, um, $42. So if I'm looking for this amount to be lower than $42, then I need to put my less than. Now, when she says that she wants to spend no more than $42, could she spend an exact amount? The answer is yes. She, she's okay with spending exactly $42 on the seven bags, but she doesn't want to spend any more than that. So here's my inequality. Um, 7 times x is less than or equal to 42. And then when you solve it out, you end up with dividing by 7, divide by 7, and you get x is less than or equal to, because we bring down your inequality, 6. So we need each goodie bag to be less than or equal to $6. And that's what she says right here. Remember that at most, is going to translate to less than or equal to, and then at least will translate to greater than or equal to. And just make, make it make sense in your head. Like, use examples, throw numbers in there, make sure it works. All right, and that's the end of 8.7, Solve One-Step Inequalities. We'll see you in school.